a lot's made out of, of, of influence these days. You know, people want to be influencers. Well, I think that this sixth law of success might be the primary reason why that ever happens. And the sixth law of success is enthusiasm, which will enable you to saturate all with whom you come in contact with interest in you and your ideas. Enthusiasm is the foundation of a pleasing personality, and you must have such a, pers a personality in order to influence others to cooperate with you. So what is enthusiasm? Enthusiasm is a state of mind that inspires and arouses one to put action into the task at hand. But it does more than this. It's contagious. It vitally affects not only the enthusiast, but all with whom he comes in contact. Enthusiasm bears the same relationship to a human being that steam does to the locomotive. It's the vital moving force that impels action. Enthusiasm is not merely a figure of speech. It's a vital force that you can harness and use with profit. Without it, you would resemble an electric battery without electricity. Enthusiasm is the vital force with which you recharge your body and develop a dynamic personality. Some people are blessed with natural enthusiasm while others must acquire it. So the procedure through which it can be developed is simple. It begins by doing the work. It begins by the doing of the work or rendering of the service, which one likes best. And we've talked a lot about this topic in the past. How do you find that work that you like best? And here's what he says. If you, if you should be so situated that you cannot conveniently engage in the work which you like best for the time being, then you can proceed along another line very effectively by adopting a definite chief aim that contemplates your engaging in that particular work at some time in the future. So before passing to the next step in this lesson, I want to repeat and to emphasize the fact that you may develop enthusiasm over your definite chief aim in life, no matter whether you are in position to achieve that purpose at this time or not. You may be a long way from, realiza from realization of your definite chief aim. But if you'll kindle the fire of enthusiasm in your heart and keep it burning before very long, the obstacles that now stand in the way of your attainment of that purpose will melt away as if by the force of magic. And you will find yourself in possession of power that you did not know you possessed. So here's how enthusiasm will affect you. If you mix enthusiasm with your work, it, won't, it will not seem hard or monotonous. Enthusiasm will so energize your entire body that you can get along with less than half the usual amount of sleep. And at the same time, it will enable you to perform two to three times as much work as you usually perform in a given period without fatigue. Sounds pretty cool. How will enthusiasm affect others? Earlier in the program, you know, Hill teaches us these, the concepts of suggestion and auto-suggestion, with suggestion being the principle through which your words and your acts and even your state of mind influence others. When, you, when your own mind is vibrating at a high frequency because it has been stimulated by enthusiasm, that vibration registers in the mind of all within its radius, and especially in the minds of those with whom you come in contact. The subject of suggestion constitutes so vitally an important part of this lesson and of this entire course that I will now proceed to describe the three mediums through which it usually operates, namely what you say, what you do, and what you think. The three mediums through which enthusiasm primarily operates. When you're enthusiastic over the goods you're selling or the services you're offering or the speech you're delivering, your state of mind becomes obvious to all who hear you by the tone of your voice. Whether you've ever thought of it in this way or not, it is the tone in which you make a statement more than it is the statement itself that carries the conviction or fails to convince. No mere combination of words can ever take the place of a deep belief in a statement that is expressed with burning enthusiasm. Words are but devitalized sounds unless colored with feeling that is born of enthusiasm. That which you say is an important factor in the operation of the principle of suggestion, but not nearly so important as that which you do. Your acts will count for more than your words, and woe unto you if the two fail to harmonize. Your thoughts constitute the most important of the three ways in which you apply the principle of suggestion. For the reason 
that they control the tone of your words and to some extent, at least your actions. If your thoughts and your actions and your words harmonize, you are bar you're bound to influence those with whom you, can, you come in contact, more or less towards your way of thinking. This is the point that I would stress with all the power at my command. It's not so much what you say as, as it is the tone and manner in which you say it that makes a lasting impression. It naturally follows, therefore, that sincerity of purpose, honesty, and earnestness must be placed back of all that one says if one would make a lasting and favorable impression. Whatever you successfully sell to, your, to others, you must first sell to yourself. No man can afford to express through words or acts that which is not in harmony with his own belief. And if he does so, he must pay by the loss of his ability to influence others. Do not believe that I... I do not believe that I can afford to try to deceive anyone about anything, but I know that I can afford that I cannot afford to try to deceive myself. To do so would destroy the power of my pen and render my words ineffective. It is only when I write with the fire of enthusiasm burning in my heart that my writing impresses others favorably, and it is only when I speak from a heart that is bursting with belief in my message that I can move my audience to accept that method message. Enthusiasm is never a matter of chance. There are certain stimuli which produce enthusiasm, the most important of these being as follows. Number one, occupation and work which one loves best. Number two, environment where one comes in contact with others who are enthusiastic and optimistic. Number three, financial success. Number four, complete mastery and application in one's daily work of the 15 laws of success. Number five, good health. Number six, knowledge that one has served others in some helpful manner. Number seven, good clothes, appropriate to the needs of one's actions and one's occupation. So if you're lacking enthusiasm, take these seven and ask yourself, which of those are you missing? The sixth law of success is enthusiasm. Thanks for watching. Until next time.